Hey guys, it's your girl Sage. I hope you're having a wonderful day or night whenever this video finds you. I'm here with our daily bread and for today we have the second book of Samuel, Samuel chapter 2, David anointed king of Judah. It happened after this that David inquired of the Lord saying, shall I go up to any of the cities of Judah? And the Lord said to him, go up. David said, where shall I go up? And he said, to Hebron. So David went up there, and his two wives also, Ahinoam the Jezreelatress, and Abigail the widow of Nabal the Carmelite. And David brought up the men who were with him, every man with his household. So they dwelt in the cities of Hebron. Then the men of Judah came, and there they anointed David king over the house of Judah. And they told David, saying, The men of Jabesh Gilead were the ones who buried Saul. So David sent messengers to the men of Jabesh Gilead and said to them, you are blessed of the Lord, for you have shown this kindness to your Lord, to Saul, and have buried him. And now may the Lord show kindness and truth to you. I also will repay you this kindness, because you have done this thing. Now therefore let your hands be strengthened, and be valiant, for your master Saul is dead, and also the house of Judah has anointed me king over them. Ish Ishbosheth, may king of Israel. But Abner, the son of Ner, commander of Saul's army, took Ishbosheth, the son of Saul, and brought him over to Mahanaim. And he made him king over Gilead, over the Asherites, over Jezreel, over Ephraim, over Benjamin, and over all Israel. Ishbosheth, Saul's son, was forty years old when he began to reign over Israel, and he reigned two years. Only the house of Judah followed David. And the time that David was king in Hebron over the house of Judah was seven years and six months. Israel and Judah at war. Now Abner, the son of Ner, and the servants of Ishbosheth, the son of Saul, went out from Mahanaim to Gibeon. And Joab, the son of Zariah, and the servants of David went out and met them by the pool of Gibeon. So they sat down, one on one side of the pool, and the other on the other side of the pool. Then Abner said to Joab, Let the young men now arise and compete before us. And Joab said, Let them arise. So they arose and went over by number twelve from Benjamin, followers of Ishbosheth, the son of Saul, and twelve from the servants of David. And each one grasped his opponent by the head and thrust his sword in his opponent's side. So they fell down together. Therefore that place was called the Field of Sharp Swords, which is in Gibeon. So there was a very fierce battle that day, and Abner and the men of Israel were beaten before the servants of David. Now the three sons of Zariah were there, Joab and Abishai and Ashael. And Ashael was as a fleet of, of foot as a wild gazelle. So Ashael pursued Abner, and in going he did not turn to the right hand or to the left from following Abner. Then Abner looked behind him and said, Are you Ashael? And he answered, I am. And Abner said to him, Turn aside to your right hand or to your left, and lay hold on one of the young men, and take his armor for yourself. But Ashael would not turn aside from following him. So Abner said again to Ashael, Turn aside from following me. Why should I strike you to the ground? How then could I face your brother Joab? However, he refused to turn aside. Therefore, Abner struck him in the stomach with the blunt end of the spear, so that the spear came out of his back, and he fell down um, there, and he and died on the spot. So it was that as many as came to the place where Ashael fell down and died, stood still. Joab and Abishai also pursued Abner, and the sun was going down when they came to the hill of Ammah, which is before Gia by the road to the wilderness of Gibeon. Now the children of Benjamin gathered together behind Abner and became a unit and took their stand on top of a hill. Then Abner called to Joab and said, Shall the sword devour forever? Do you not know that I will? it will be a bitter in the latter end? How long will it be until you tell the people to return from pursuing their brethren? And Joab said, As God lives, unless you had spoken, surely then by morning all the people would have given up pursuing their brethren. So Joab blew a trumpet, and all the people stood still and did not pursue Israel anymore, nor did they fight anymore.
Then Abner and his men went on all that night through the plain, crossed over the Jordan, and went through Bithron, and they came to Mahanaim. So Joab returned from pursuing Abner, and when he had gathered all the people together, there were missing of David's servants, nineteen men, and Ashael. But the servants of David had had struck down of Benjamin and Abner's men, three hundred and sixty men who died. Then they took up Ashael and buried him in his father's tomb, which was in Bethlehem. And Joab and his men went all night, and they came to Hebron at daybreak. All right, so let's go ahead and talk about it. So we see here in um, 2 Samuel chapter 2, David is finally recognized and anointed as king by um, the people of, of Judah. However, we also know that the Lord had spoken that David was anointed king all the way back in the first book of Samuel, chapter 16, right after Saul had disobeyed the Lord by sparing uh, the king of Agag. Um, so, nonetheless, the Lord needed a new servant, a servant that had a heart towards him. Um, so, of course, we know that the Lord had chosen David, that he had chosen David for his pure heart and his humility before the Lord, and not because of his appearance or anything else. Um, but nonetheless, uh, I just want to give you a quick fun fact that after the Lord had spoken that David would be anointed king over all Israel, we actually see that there was a span of, I believe it was either 13 or 15 years that passed until this came to pass. Um, and not to mention, it did not go without persecution. How many times did Saul attempt to take David's life? How many years was David fleeing from Saul out of fear for his life? And how many opportunities did David receive chance that he could have killed Saul? But Saul, or I'm sorry, but Saul was anointed by the Lord in David's eyes. David recognized him as as his king, and David would not do this disrespectful thing out of humility of his Lord. So again, I just wanted to mention all that because there was a lot of time that passed since um, in 1 Samuel chapter 16 when David was anointed king by the Lord that finally David is coming into that promise. I just wanted to mention that because um, this is very important that we remember that when the Lord speaks, it will happen. It does not return void. And also, the Lord is not man who should lie or change his mind. And um, that's a lot of what uh, the Lord wants me to speak about today as well. Because um, going to the rest of this chapter, we do see that. <clears throat> I just want to create a picture for you. So despite David being anointed king over uh, the tribe of Judah, that he still hasn't received his entire promise of being made king over all of Israel. And we actually see that there is some resistance still occurring before he is to receive that promise. We see that Abner, the son of Ner, he anoints Ishbosheth, the one of Saul's sons, to be made king over Israel. But we also know that the Lord had spoken to Saul or uh, through Samuel saying that his sons would also not be made on the throne. So here's the thing. Abner did make one of Saul's son a king. He was king for only two years because it was not founded on the Lord. Meanwhile, David, on the other hand, he had already had more time being king over the tribe of Judah under his belt by the time Ishbosheth was actually made king over Israel. And the thing about that is Ishbosheth, he actually had more favor. He had um he had the Asherites, Jezreel, Ephraim, Benjamin, and all the other tribes of Israel that were in support of him. David only had the men that were with him and the tribe of Judah. That's all he had. Yet, nonetheless, when they went to war, so now Israel and Judah, they go to war against each other, we actually see that those who are following and serving David um, have better have better success than those who are following King Ishbosheth because the Lord's hand is on David. The Lord had chosen David to be king. The Lord had spoken. David would be king. He never spoke that Ishbosheth would be made king. And because of what the Lord had spoken, we know that it turns out that David does eventually become king over all Israel. It started with the tribe of Judah, but he became king over all Israel. Meanwhile, Ishbosheth, he only rules two years, and after that, he steps down. 
Um, he steps down because he knows that the Lord had not called for him to be king. He knows it, and he's not one to go against the Lord. Um, but nonetheless, so then, of course, we see that they're going to battle, and we see that, again, King David's side of that battle is favored. He only loses 20 men as compared to how many men um, Ishbosheth loses, 360. That's 18 times more than how many men that David lost. And it really goes to show who the Lord was favoring that day. Um, and, and also, I want to say this because the Lord the Lord favors the one who does what's right and who does what his, is his will. The Lord does not favor who is going against his will. Um, but nonetheless, I, I just wanted to mention that because this is a really strong reminder that, you know, if the Lord is on our side, who can come up against us? Why should we be afraid of man who can kill the body when we should be afraid of the one who can kill the body and the soul? Um, and also, if the Lord is for us, who can come up against us? So no matter how our circumstances may look at times, no matter what we may wake up to each and every day, you know, no matter what that doctor's report said, no matter if we are in the lion's pit with a bunch of hungry lions, no matter if we only have three miles left before our tank is empty, no matter if we only have two days before we have to pay our mortgage or our for, or our, um, our house payment note, you know, no matter what our circumstances look like, if God has spoken, we know it will come to pass. If we know that God has spoken a promise over our life, it will come to pass. We know that God works out all things good for those who are called according to his purpose. David, David stepped up to the calling that the Lord had over his life. And despite everything that David had gone through, that eventually everything that David had gone through was repurposed to write us the book of Psalms. And those Psalms are inspiring for those who might be going through some rough times. They might be, you know, they might be um, full of wisdom that encourages us on who the Lord is because we also know that it's true because we know that the Lord is never changing. And, you know, we know that the Lord, when he speaks, his words not return void. When the Lord speaks, he is faithful. The one that called us to the promises that he has spoken over our lives, he is faithful and he will do it because that's who the Lord is. And, you know, it's, it's not because of us or anything that we've done, but it's because of him and his great love for us and his great faithfulness to us. So no matter what our circumstances may look like, no matter how long it takes to get there, I mean, and I'm saying that I'm, I'm immediately thinking about Abraham and Sarah. It, they were in their nineties and one hundreds or, or around that age when they finally had Isaac, finally had Isaac or how many years had Hannah prayed that she would have beget a son. And finally she was blessed with Samuel, Samuel, who was assisting David at this time. Well, well, not at this time, but he did assist David in the past and then he died. Or what about another example, King Ahab in first book of Kings, where the Lord had spoken that King Ahab, he would, he would die and that dogs would lick up his blood. And so King Ahab did everything he could to avoid his fate. He disguised himself in the time of battle as just another fighter. He wore, garnished himself with armor and even had someone going around pretending to be him. And finally, when um, when the false King Ahab was sought out and he said, whoa, whoa, I'm not Ahab, I'm not Ahab. And the people relented from pursuing him. Ahab was still in disguise. They didn't know where he was, yet he still died exactly the way the Lord had spoken over his life. He was struck with an arrow and he bled out and the dogs licked up his blood. There is absolutely nothing that we can do to avoid the words of God in our lives. Even um, even now, just speaking that Jonah, right? If you all know Jonah in the book of Jonah, he heard a word from the Lord. He fled and directly disobeyed the Lord, even though he was in Hebrew and he was a man that feared the Lord. He directly disobeyed the Lord by running away from giving that word. Yet the Lord still got him to go to Nineveh 
faster than he should have and spoke that word. The Lord's will be done. The Lord, the creator of all things, in control of all things, his will be done. So no matter what our circumstances might look like, no matter how many people are against us, no matter how many weapons are formed against us because they will not prosper, that is a promise of the inheritance of the servants of God. No matter our disobedience, no matter how much we may screw up and do things wrong, no matter. God has spoken, it will come to pass. It will. So, I just, I, I'm feeling really encouraged to let someone know that if God has spoken something over your life, it's going to come to pass, and to not worry. You know, worry is is a product of doubt in the Lord God. And, you know, who are we to doubt the one that that does all things... Grading greatly, exceedingly better than beyond what we can imagine. Who are we to question the one that is creator of all things and designer of all things and does all things perfect and according to his will at the perfect time? You know, who are we to doubt that? And I mean, I'll be honest with you, even as I say that, I'm taking a huge um, dose of my own medicine right now because... I won't lie to you. I, I myself, there's been times where even I've, I've kind of been there. But I'm really hoping that this word encouraged someone. I know it encouraged me, and I'm praying that it encouraged you too. So in any case, I'm going to go ahead and wrap this video up here. I am praying that this message was someone. And if it did, feel free to like, subscribe. And until next time, I hope all of y'all take care. Bye-bye.